Hi guys, Tim again with Southern Exposure. Welcome to another episode. What we're planning on doing today is we're going to end up cutting up uh, some 12 foot pine into 2 by 4 by 12s. Um, and I'm going to take and walk you through step by step, beginning to end, exactly what I do to take and cut these out and the reason why. Uh, I get a lot of comments uh, through my email asking questions, so I'm hoping I can answer all those right now. So let's go ahead and look at our first victim for the day. Okay, the first log we're going to end up cutting up today is going to be this 12 foot pine. Um, I got it painted on the end and the orange, the color orange indicates 12 foot. So anyway, and the species is pine. So with that said, if you look at the end of this log right here, this is a 12 inch diameter down here on the big end. The little end is 11 inches, so there's very little taper inside of this log. Um, but if you look at the end of it, the grain that is in here is extremely tight. This is going to make some really, really good structural lumber. It stays tight uh, from right in this area right here, which is where a bulk of the meat is going to come from whenever we end up cutting this thing open. If you see this lighter colored area that's right in here, that is the juvenile wood for the log. Juvenile wood is the, the first layers of wood that the log actually produces whenever it comes up from a seedling to a sapling and on into a tree. So this juvenile wood right here ends up having a lot of sprigs of limbs coming off of it and it's a very weak portion of the tree. So whenever I usually cut these, what I usually do is I'll start from the top, work my way down until I get the bottom width, then I'll flip it over 180 degrees. There's a reason why I flip it over 180 degrees. I see a lot of guys on these band mills and what they do is they'll take and cut on it and then they'll flip it 90 degrees and then they'll cut on it again. Then they'll flip it another 90 and cut on it again. All right. There's a reason why I don't do that. I used to do that whenever I first got uh, one of these wood misers. I don't do that anymore. And here's the reason why. Um, whenever you end up cutting from this, let's say that this has had bark all the way around it. Whenever there's bark on the outside of a log, um, I don't like cutting those. And there's a reason for it because that bark hides dirt, uh, rocks, debris, and everything gets encapsulated in that bark. So whenever that blade hits it, you'll end up wearing that blade out. Imagine taking a piece of sandpaper and just constantly wearing on one spot on that metal blade. It doesn't matter what kind of metal it is, it ain't gonna last long. So with no bark on it means that your blade lasts a little bit longer. So whenever you end up cutting it and then turning it 90 degrees, that blade is constantly in bark the entire time. So if I ended up making a cut here, turned it 90 degrees, there's still bark on this side, I cut again, in the bark again, turn another 90 degrees, there's still bark on the other side and the blade ends up running through bark again. So here's the reason why I end up taking, I do it 180 degrees. Whenever you make a cut on this side, you're cutting through the bark. Okay. The bark, the debris, the, any rocks or anything that's going to be embedded is not always, but usually it'll end up being on the outside of the log. If the bark was on here, cut on this side, flip it 180 degrees, cut on this side. So that way your next cuts, you won't be cut, chances are you won't be gut, cutting through the bark because you'll have a flat side here, flat side here. So that blade isn't gonna touch the bark. So you're wearing out your blade half as much as you would if you would turn it 90 degrees. That's, that's what I've noticed. Um, if you own a band mill, do whatever you feel is best. 
Uh, but that's what I've noticed. That's the reason why I do it. Anyway, so this end of the log being 12 inches in diameter, the other end being 11 inches in diameter, um, very little taper in this log. No tow, tow boards required for this unless I'm going to raise it up a half inch. Uh, your tow boards, you only really want to use that stuff whenever you're trying to say this end was 12 inches and the other end was, I don't know, 8 inches. So we have a 4 inch difference between that end and this end. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to raise your tow board up half the distance. So raise the tow board up 2 inches or your, that end of the log, raise it up two inches. And then by doing that, you balance out um, the way the log sits. But whenever you do that, you gotta make sure <laughs> that you drop that tow board back down whenever you, after you get all your faces on this thing, okay? Just remember that. Um, all right, so this log, we're gonna end up cutting some two by fours out of, two by four, um, 12 foot. I'm going to take make a slab cut here, drop down an inch and five eighths, make another uh, cut. That board will end up running through the edger, and we'll go on the other side and do the same thing. Probably even get a one by and two two by sixes out of this, a one by, probably a one by six, and then seven two by fours eight foot. So this is a good dry log. Uh, it's been on the ground for a while. This is another one of the roadside finds. Let me show you the other log right now. Okay, this log right here is another pine, 12 foot. We're gonna get some more two by four 12s out of this. Um, once again, I got minimal bark on this. I, I try to leave them on the ground long enough for the bark to fall off. Um, that works out really well. Blades last a lot longer that way. Anyway, down here on the small ends, 14 inches. The other end, the big end, uh, it's around 16 and a half. All right, so we are going to use tow boards on this, take and raise it up. We also have an, a defect with this log being this area right here. There was obviously uh, a rub that was done on this tree. Um, in its younger younger days and this is all heart and fat lighter right in here uh, so this is going to gum up a lot and whenever i say gum up that's whenever the sap that's in the wood attaches itself to the blade okay so in order to stop it from gumming up like that, the reason why you don't want it to gum up is because that generates heat, friction, friction ends up stretching the metal and the blade ends up breaking. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some diesel fuel as my cooling medium, 100% diesel fuel. Um, I think that's going to work out real good. It'll stop the pitch for sure from uh, gumming up the blade and allow the blade to go smoother through the wood. And it'll actually, it actually helps out my uh, belts that the blades run on as well. You can hear those cicadas out there screaming. Oh my gosh. Anyway, all right, so it's a nice 80 degrees this evening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I already got this one chucked up. We're going to go ahead and fire up the mill, get that thing warmed up, put our eyes and ears on and go ahead and start slabbing this thing out. So with that said, kick back, relax, grab yourself a glass of sweet tea and take in a little bit of southern exposure. Let's do it.
Okay, let me show you real quick exactly what this lumber looks like. This is the free stuff that's on the side of the road, okay? All it takes is somebody to have a little bit of initiative and go get it. That's something that's very rare, especially nowadays. Let me show you what it looks like. Look at how beautiful that wood is. Good tight grain. Got some good denim stating. Very minimal knots. More denim. We got a little bit of chatter right there in the blade. Good denim. That right there is a hole from the dugout from a uh, carpenter bee. That's what that's from. Trying to dig his home out. There's another one right there. Man, that is some beautiful stuff right there. Wow. Okay, so now let's go ahead and roll this thing over 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and start taking some boards off of that side. Let's see if we can go ahead and uh, get a couple more two by sixes, maybe even a one by. Hello? Hey, baby. Yeah. There's a snake down by the fake tree trunk. There's a snake down by the fake tree trunk? You know the fake tree trunk where you put the deer food in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm heading down there. Okay, as you can see right here, by cut already cutting this side and this side, cutting it, flipping 180 degrees, cutting the other side, now I have the width of the board I'm going to cut. And then at the same time, you can see the blade travel. The blade is actually not even touching the outside of the log. It's touching the fresh wood that's on the inside. 
So the chances of dirt and debris, sand, rock, whatever, bark, hitting that blade are very, very minute. So cutting it like that, flipping it 180 degrees is actually better. Now the reason why I end up stopping, here's the juvenile wood, here's the pith of the log. Here's the reason why I always stop just short of getting to that juvenile wood is because, let me show you real quick. Okay, whenever you end up cutting a, a log and you cut into it, that log may, may have tension inside of it, which is quite often, especially the more moisture that appears to be in the log, and if the log has a bow to it, then it's going to have a lot more tension in it. Um, stuff like water oak. Water oak has a lot of tension in it. Always have, always will be. Um, willow oak has a lot of tension in it. So um, how you get around that is you don't cut all the way down into the juvenile wood. This isn't going to stop it from having tension in it. However, it reduces the amount of tension. That's all it does. So whenever you cut it, say you cut the board on, on top, this is your, your log, and you cut the board on top, what ends up happening is the tension overwhelms on the other side, overwhelms what's being removed on top. So the log begins to bow like this. So whenever you flip it over to cut, now this part right here is bowed up and this part back here is bowed up and this part's down. So whenever you end up making your straight cut, now your cut's uneven. All right. So that's the reason why I like to stop just before uh, I get to the juvenile wood if possible. And also this juvenile area is extremely weak. Um, and it's probably the worst wood that's going to be inside of that log because a lot of times you end up getting uh, splitting and cracking in that juvenile wood uh, that goes down the, the length of the log. And you see that a lot with uh, stuff like your pin oaks, um, your water oaks, your willow oaks, and stuff like that. You see it a lot in them. And your uh, uh, sweet gum, sweet gum has it a lot, so does hickory. So that's the reason why I end up stopping. Then what I'm gonna end up doing now is I'm gonna take these two two by fours off, take this uh, slab off, I'm gonna throw it on the burn pile, I'm going to turn this log, this cant, 180 degrees, and this will end up being the bottom on the bunks, and then I'm going to start cutting down the log, Cut it, cutting down the cant until I finish it up. So, with that said, I'm not going to do no more on this tonight, I'm going to call it quits, and uh... Go eat some cake. So, with that said, I'll see you in the morning.